everybody. Today's practice problem comes from Principles of Microeconomics by N. Gregory Mankiw. We are, as usual, working with the sixth edition, and we're going to be doing chapter five, problem number five. This problem begins as follows. It says the equilibrium price of coffee mugs rose sharply last month, but the equilibrium quantity was the same as ever. And then it asks us to find out whose explanation. We get three potential explanations, and we're asked to figure out which ones are actually representative of the situation described. So let's write down this situation to remind us of what we're supposed to be looking for. It said the equilibrium price of coffee mugs, so that's just in our notation, P star, P for price, star for equilibrium, that that rose sharply, but that our equilibrium quantity, or Q star, didn't change. So we're looking for situations that are consistent with this here. So our first possibility, by a lovely lad named Billy, says demand increased, but supply was totally inelastic. So the way we're going to figure this out is we're going to draw a supply and demand diagram to see what that looks like. So we can come over here and say, this is Billy. And we start off by drawing a supply and demand graph. And remember, we have our quantity. In this case, we're talking about a market quantity, so we're using capital Q. And we have a market price, which is this P on the vertical axis. We weren't told anything specific about our demand curve, so really the best we could do is to draw our demand curve normally as downward sloping because demand curves obey the law of demand that says price and quantity demanded move in opposite directions. And then we have this supply curve that we're told is totally inelastic. Now, totally inelastic is really just a synonym for perfectly inelastic. So we want to think about what's going on with this supply curve. And to do that, it's helpful to remind ourselves what the formula for price elasticity of supply is. And we could write little e sub s, or sometimes it's capital E sub s, but price elasticity of supply is equal to the percent change in the quantity supplied, in this context, quantity supplied by the market overall, divided by the percent change in price. And what we see is because we generally have supply curves that are upward sloping, this is going to give us usually a positive number, or at least a non-negative number. And we don't have to think necessarily about taking the absolute value, because this is, if this is never going to be negative, the absolute value is not going to matter. So it makes it a little bit different from price elasticity of demand in that way. But anyway, we come back to thinking about this. And we say if supply is totally inelastic, that means that the price elasticity of supply is equal to zero. So we can say, well, what would make this quantity equal to zero? Well, this quantity, this ratio is going to be equal to zero when the percent change in quantity supplied is equal to zero. So we could infer from this that our percent change in quantity supplied is equal to zero. And that's just a mathematical way of saying, hey, our quantity supplied is never going to change regardless of what the price is. So we can think about what that looks like graphically. And graphically, that just looks like a vertical line. So our supply curve must actually look like this. And you could confirm that this makes sense because you could see, regardless of what the price is at, our quantity supplied is always going to be at the same quantity. So the next thing we have to think about is we not only have this market description, we're told that something is happening in this market. So we have demand increasing. So we say demand increases, so our demand is just moving to the right. So it looks something like this. We get to D prime here. And then we can label the old and new equilibria. You know, we get some comparative statics going on here also. And we can see that the old price is just here. I'll call this P1 star. And the new price is up here. I'll call this P2 star. We can also notice that our equilibrium quantity didn't in fact change because they both have to be on this supply curve, which is fixed at a particular quantity. 
So we could say here that this represents both Q1 star and Q2 star. But what I'll do instead is I'll just call this Q star. So here, we can think now about whether this is consistent with the scenario that we were looking for. So we were looking for a sharp increase in price, which is what we seem to have here, but a quantity that does not change, which is also what we see here. So Billy's scenario seems to fit the description that we were looking for. Next up, we have a seemingly nice girl named Marion who has a different hypothesis about what's going on. So her hypothesis is that supply increased, but so did demand. So we can think about Marion over here, and we can draw a graph for her and see whether this can be made consistent with the scenario that we're looking for. So again, if we're going to draw a supply and demand diagram, we just want market quantity on our horizontal axis, market price on our vertical axis. In this case, we weren't told anything special about supply and demand, so really all we can do is draw a typical supply curve that slopes upward and a typical demand curve that slopes downward. Remember, supply up to the sky, demand down to the land. There's a helpful mnemonic there that we talked about in an earlier practice problem. could also think about here, if you want another mnemonic, you'll notice that perfectly inelastic supply or perfectly inelastic demand is vertical. So it actually just happens that it looks like an I, so I for inelastic. And the opposite extreme, if you had perfectly elastic supplier demand, is it would just be completely horizontal. So anyway, back to this one here. So we have a supply increase and a demand increase. So a supply increase is a shift to the right of the supply curve. Or technically, you could think about it as a shift down, but that gets a little bit weird. Increases are always shifts to the right, um, decreases are always shifts to the left. You never go wrong if you think about it that way. So we've got our increase in supply, and we've got an increase in demand. Now I cheated a little bit, and I drew this in a particular way. And the reason I drew this in a particular way is because I knew that one of the things we were looking at was supposed to come back to the point that it started at. So I actually drew here my supply and demand shifts were of the same magnitude so that I could at least see if I could get back to the point that I started at for one of these, um, for one of these variables. But what we'll notice here, if we were to can, even in this sort of contrived case, if we were trying to figure out what happened to the market equilibrium, it goes from here to here, right? So what we're seeing in this situation is that by making these shifts the same amount, I actually just brought us back to the original equilibrium price. But we see here that we have a Q1 star and we have a Q2 star. So actually what's happening in this case is that we're getting a pretty noticeable change in quantity in the equilibrium, but we're not getting a change in equilibrium price, which is the opposite of what we were looking for. So this situation doesn't match with the scenario that was being described. It's also worth noting, if I were to think about the individual effects here, I could say when my supply increases, that drives equilibrium prices down and equilibrium quantities up. We just know that that's how comparative statics work. You could draw a little picture to convince yourself of that. Or you could notice that you could just look at the equilibrium going from here to here, which is on the new supply curve with the original demand curve. We also know that demand increases increase equilibrium prices and increase equilibrium quantities. So it shouldn't be surprising then that if we had both of these happening, we would obviously get an increase in equilibrium quantity, but we wouldn't actually be able to tell what happens overall to equilibrium price, that it would depend on how large the individual shifts in supply and demand were, that we could either get an increase in price, a decrease in price, or as I drew it here, we could have a price that stays the same. 
So it's just important to remember that the price doesn't always come back to what it was originally, that I specifically set up the situation so that it would look that way. So our third scenario is from a girl named Valerie, and her hypothesis is that supply decreased, but demand was totally inelastic. So we need to think about what that looks like. But again, we can start with a supply and demand diagram for Valerie. So again, we can draw quantity on the horizontal axis and price on the vertical axis. And here, we weren't told anything about supply other than it decreased. So we could say that we have a normal looking supply curve that looks something like this. But then we were told that demand was totally inelastic. So let's think about what price elasticity of demand looks like and what that would mean for our curves here. So like price elasticity of supply, I could write price elasticity of demand, which is either little e sub d or sometimes capital E sub d, depending on your textbook. And we said that in a lot of textbooks, we report this as the absolute value of the percent change in quantity demanded divided by the percent change in price. Just so that we always get a positive number, even though we know that quantity demanded and price are always moving in opposite directions because demand curves slope downwards. So we would be getting a negative number for this and then taking the absolute value. Some textbooks don't do that and just leave it as a negative number, which is also fine. In either case, if we were told that demand was totally inelastic, that means that our demand has a price elasticity of demand of zero. So similar to what we saw here, if our price elasticity of demand is equal to zero, and we think about, well, how do we get a zero out of this? We get a zero out of this when our percent change in quantity demanded is zero. So we can infer that the percent change in quantity demanded is equal to zero. And we can think about what that looks like graphically. So if I'm never changing my quantity demanded, then my quantity demanded is just fixed regardless of what the price looks like. And I would get demand that looks something like this. So just like we said that totally or perfectly inelastic supply looked like an eye, it was a vertical line, we can see here the perfectly inelastic or totally inelastic demand is also a vertical line. Looks like an eye. That's convenient. So we have a situation that looks like this, and then we're told that supply decreased. So a decrease is just a shift to the left. So we can say that our new supply curve was something like this here. And we could locate the old and the new equilibrium. Our old equilibrium price was here. I'll call this P1 star. Our new equilibrium price was here. I'll call this P2 star. And we'll notice that the old and the new equilibrium quantity are at the same quantity because this demand curve is vertical and both the equilibrium points are on that demand curve. So we could call this both Q1 and Q2 star as we did before with supply or with Billy's example here, rather. But instead, I'll just again, just to make it simpler, I'll just call this Q star. So we can go back and we can check and see how this fares against what we were looking for. So we were looking for a situation where we got a noticeable increase in price. So we, in fact, do get a noticeable increase in price here, or is that a sharp increase in price? I don't know how to categorize that, but. Sure, we can make that happen. And no change in the equilibrium quantity. Well, again, no change in equilibrium quantity. So again, Valerie's hypothesis, or her guess of a scenario, is also consistent with the outcome that we were looking for. And in general, what you'll notice from this example is that if you either have perfectly inelastic supply or perfectly inelastic demand, shifting around the other curve isn't actually going to change the equilibrium quantity in the market. It's just going to move the equilibrium price in the market. As we saw with these changes here, 
we would get an increase in price. But if we made these changes in the opposite direction, if we had either a decrease in demand or an increase in supply, we would have instead seen a decrease in price, but still no change in equilibrium quantity.